Hello, this again is Apostle Patrick T. Randolph coming to you from Praise Christian Center World Outreach in Channel View, Texas, on Houston's east side. Not far from Houston, but right really the border of, of Channel View and Houston are right lined up together. And so I just want to encourage you this morning to know that the Lord our God is a faithful God. And I want to welcome you again to another uh, broadcast of I Care. But I also want to invite you to come to the ministry here at Praise Christian Center World Outreach at 1100 Dale Dale. And I want you to know that you're going to have a great time. The word is going to bless you. The music and the worship is going to bless you. Your life, I tell you, you know, it's not a cliche to me, but your life will be changed. Your life will never, ever be the same if you really get in and apply what is happening to in, in our church and in your life. Because I tell you, we love to worship God. We love to bless God. And we won't go forward until we have received his presence in our services. And so I thank God. Hallelujah for our ministry, and I thank God for you coming by and visiting with us on a regular basis. God is so, so good. I promise you, your life, again, will change. I care about that. Amen? And so now, again, I've been talking to you this week about death. Amen? And so we left off talking about the fact that the Lord said, if you believe that Jesus died, amen, you will understand death in a greater way. Hello? And so... The thing it is, is God doesn't want us to, to carry the sorrows. He doesn't want us to grieve. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus in Isaiah 53, that's why it says again that he bore our sorrows. He took all of that stuff from us so that we don't have to do it. Well, how do you mean he took it for us? Well, Jesus took on the sin that we all were facing. And Jesus conquered sin. He conquered the enemy. Amen. When he went to Calvary's cross. And when I say the enemy, I'm talking about the devil. Uh, he defeated him, defeated darkness. So guess what? There are some things that we need to come together and learn and understand about how the kingdom of God works. Because once we accept Christ, we are in his kingdom. Amen? And so there are certain ways that we do things. And one of the things is we believe the report of the Lord. We have to. We must believe the report of the Lord. Why? Because that's, that's important to his arm being released on our behalf. That's important to him being able to do for us in our lives on a consistent basis because what well, he loves us and he wants to see about us. You know, the word of God says in Ephesians, in the Amplified translation of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says God has prepared paths for us ahead of time that we might live the good life on those paths. That's what he thinks about you. But all these things come together. You need to have understanding of what it is that God is doing. And so, again, when it comes to dying, amen, uh, especially for the believer, you have to recognize the fact that God, matter of fact, that God doesn't want you to be without hope. He doesn't want you to sorrow as others do, as the word of God says, those that have no hope. So God is looking out for you. And then again, in verse number uh, 16, no, I want to go to verse 15 in, in, in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. And it says, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that they which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So what this simply tells us is that when the Lord comes back, amen, to the earth, that there are going to be people still alive. Everybody's not going to die. But we will be changed. Hallelujah. So the scripture teaches us clearly that there will be those that are alive and remain at the coming of the Lord. And so, in other words, those that die, listen to me, those that die ahead of time before the Lord comes back, they will, you, you will not get into heaven before they do because we're all going to come together in the sky. We meet one another in the sky. Amen? And then forever we're going to be with the Lord. But it says in, the, in that 16th verse, for if the Lord himself shall descend, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ, now watch what I said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. When? First. Not second, not third, not fourth, but we're all going together. Amen? And that's why you can have the hope in your life uh, about those that die, that, uh, that they, when they die in Christ, then you have the hope of seeing them again. And you will see them. Hallelujah. But when the person dies, we have emotional challenges. Yeah, like I said, it's not, it's, you can't deny that. But at the same time, the Lord wants us to understand what Jesus did for us through going to Calvary's cross. And so through Calvary's cross, watch this, he even took the sting of death away. Hallelujah. I said he took the sting of death 
away from it. So the death has no true effect on us other than, again, we may mourn for a moment or two. But you come out of that mourning and you live your life the way God wants you to live your life. Amen? You know, as I said, I've gone to funerals many times and, and because people don't really understand the scripture, they understand God and how God operates. Amen? Then they fall apart as those that have no hope. But you're not of that group. You're not of that kind. You, you, you know the word. You know God. And you'll control yourself. You'll do what is necessary. Because again, let me say this to you. When you, when you fall apart, it's a one funeral. You dishonor them. Amen. You dishonor that person. And I believe personally that the way you conduct yourself will either honor or dishonor. And I believe in honoring those that go before me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So I want you to know God again. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Nobody is like our God. Nobody is like our God. Would you say that with me? Nobody is like our God. Say it one more time. Nobody is like our God. The Lord is faithful. Again, he is gracious, he is good, and he is kind. And I just want to share some other uh, passages of scripture with you this day concerning this. In Isaiah, again, in the 49th chapter, it says this, The Lord confirms, the Lord <clears throat> comforts his people and will have pity on those who suffer. God himself comforts you in your time of suffering. Amen. So, when you mourn, when you have that time or thing that you're going through concerning death and anything else, the Lord our God promises that he will comfort you. So there's nothing you can go through. There's no death, no anything that God is not the comforter. God will comfort you and strengthen you through all things again. But when you know God personally, when you know the Lord Jesus Christ, then you will be able, listen to what I'm saying to you, you will be able to handle death because you're wise in understanding what death is about. And I want to close this session this morning by sharing this part with you is this, is God did not take your loved one from you. No reason to be mad with God. No reason to be upset with God because he didn't do it in the first place. Amen. God's not going to break in and shoot you 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, and that's to his glory. No, 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 no. Think about that, children. God loves you, and he's going to see after you, and God is going to take care of you even in the midst of a person dying. Amen. Amen and amen. I care.